Whenever you're ready. Right, we're live. So I'm with um, Gary Shell. <coughs> I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah. Um. So I, I'll just tell you a little bit. So I watched. Um, so the Jack the Ripper film, very very iconic. It came out in 1988. So I watched it in '91. I was a 11 year old boy. Um, I think it was. Yeah, it was '91. It was on two parts. Um, I was absolutely captivated with the whole. That kind of really set off my uh, kind of um, bit of a strange addiction to true crime. Then I kind of started reading about the Cray Twins, and because I, I love the East End, I'm I'm, that, I'm I'm in London quite a lot. Um, and you were a very poignant part of that film, Gary. You were Billy the Pimp. Uh, <laughs> Bit of a bad lad, bit of um, you know, he was always hanging around the girls and trying to make a few quid and in the um, the ten bells. So just before I go to it, where did that? Where did the, obviously you're very well known for um doing Quadrophenia, 1979. That's a, a an iconic film, you know. That's a huge, huge thing. People are obsessed with that. But where did um? When did you get asked to be the part in this Jack the Ripper film? Um, that came from um, a guy called Peter Bryan. He was uh, the stunt director on um, Jack the Ripper, but he was also the stunt director on Quadrophenia. Um, and we'd become really good friends. And in 1980, I joined his team of stuntmen called uh, the SAS, the Special Action Services team. Um, so I was working not only as an actor, but I, I was able to do my own stunts uh, because I was on the register and I was insured. So I used to get hired a lot for um, being able to drive a motorbike and um, ridiculously. And um, so, I, so Pete and I were good mates. Um, and I just got a phone call one day from Pete saying, could I get up to London? I lived in Putney at the time. And he said, could I get up to um, London, to the West End, um, to meet this director called David Wicks? Um, um, so I didn't know anything why I was going or anything. So I got on the bus. I think it was the number 22 up to up to London. And um, what just went into this office and pete was there with this this guy called david wicks who i didn't know um and they basically told me um would i like to play this part um in this film um about jack the ripper and um i was like well am i here for an audition um and and david said no um pete says you know he'd like to work with you on this and he thinks you'd be perfect so would you like to take the script uh have a read and tell me what you think and i was like well i said well who else is in it <laughs> and they said uh oh michael kane and before he said the next one i went yeah i'll do it <laughs> Of course I'll do it. Um, so I literally had no idea. I literally went up there, met the director who sort of just gave me a once over. I don't even think, I mean, you know, I was, um, um, you know, just a, I was just out of work at the time. Um, anyway, so I came home um, and uh, started reading the script. Uh, I had no idea what it was for. I didn't know it was going to be on TV. I, I thought it may be a movie. Um, and it was shot just like a movie. I mean, it, you, there was no difference. Um, so that's how I got the part, really. So it was Peter Braham, who was a, a very well-known stunt co um, coordinator. He'd done stuff um, like The Professionals, The Sweeney, uh, all those iconic shows. So, and, and I'd worked with him for the last four years on other things. We did commercials and a couple of movies where I was driving around on a motorbike. Um, so really, it was Pete, Pete Bram, who got me the job. So you grew up in northwest London. Uh, were, you f yeah. were you familiar with, you know, this was 1988, so it was the centenary, um, you know, you, I, I'm just listening to your voice there. So people who watch that film, because um, I spoke to a couple of ripperologists in the last couple of days, uh, and they've been like, oh, wow, we're going to watch that. So your character, Billy, is, you know, it's very much kind of proper East End. It's like 
come on then and it's very different to how you're speaking now so was it was the part easy or yeah i mean uh, you know i mean going back into that old north london you know and all that i mean you know that i mean it was it, it's second nature um so i didn't have any problem i didn't have to put it on i mean it was um and everybody in the film i mean anybody that wasn't you know a policeman um everybody in that pub uh was talking like that you know so um uh, no no i didn't have to do much work on that um i mean really i know why i was there i mean you know that they knew i could act i mean that you know pete said you know don't worry about it i had a good show reel um and a pretty decent cv by then um so no really for me it was it was about doing all the the fight stuff um you know me and lewis collins in the pub and i knew lewis quite well by then i'd done an episode of the professionals um so we were we were good mates and we lived quite close to each other in north london so we socialized quite a bit so uh, when when i knew it was going to be him and he knew it was going to be me we just had so much fun doing it and the room was full of stunt men that i knew so i mean it was just like it was the best best time ever you know that i mean getting to do a, a fight in a pub anyway uh you know when you know there's going to be bottles flying and chairs flying and uh tables and people screaming and all that so it, you know we, we shot that scene over two days and it was just just so much fun it was it was amazing so where was the film um obviously the film's basically supposed to be spitalfield um Whitechapel. Where was it yeah. actually filmed? Uh, it was filmed at Pinewood, so um, it was uh, it was all of that. I mean, apart from a few locations, obviously the London locations, you know, the the big uh, the big London streets, uh, but that pub and everything else was all on a back lot um, on a film set. Uh, which had been transformed. I mean, it was an amazing, it, I mean, it really was, um, you know, Hollywood filmmaking at its finest. I mean, it, it, there was no, sh sh I mean, you, you do know that the film had already been shot once. They'd already started filming it once with an, a completely different cast of characters. Um, and then, the, but the Americans, um, where the, the film was going to be aimed at, because it was produced by Lorimar, uh, the big American film producers, um, they didn't think it, it had enough star quality in it. So David Wicks approached Michael Caine, and once they'd got Michael Caine on board, um, the budget was tripled, and um, they reshot everything. So we didn't know that. We, we, you know, we had no idea that they'd already done this once, uh, and they scrapped it, and we started from scratch. So, um, so yeah, really, but the, all those sets, they were all, you know, specially built, um, you know, all the cobbled streets and, uh, and the pub and everything else was uh, literally a film set. So how, how familiar were you to the actual real story? Um, cause I've, as I said, I've been obsessed. Um, the very, very, <clears throat> the very sad thing coming off the back of that film was, you know, Sir William Gull was obviously jack in the film um but it's a very you know i mean i done my research i found out officially on scotland yards files there was 167 suspects um but in reality there's probably hundreds and um probably after 12 a lot of them are you know uh walter sickett like kind of uh, i mean the the mm. royal theory he was he wasn't even in the country for four of the five murders but itself oh yeah no, no i mean we we know that now i mean we know that um that uh gull was you know wasn't even in the country i think he was in scotland at, at the at the time uh a very good friend of mine who is a ripperologist and worked for scotland yard a girl called lindsay civita yeah no, uh, lindsay, did... I, I, I did tell her the other day you're coming on oh hi lindsay if you watch this yeah give me she a will call. be yeah call me uh, but she i mean she actually you know got i uh, was in touch with the gold family and uh yeah i mean she did it yeah i mean she made it her business to to, to disprove david wicks yeah. you know so uh, so yeah I, I mean she did a fabulous job she's great mm -hmm. lindsay she really knows her stuff oh god um, yeah 
Yeah, so uh, yeah, so we know it wasn't him, you know. Uh, but I, I mean, we know for a fact that we'll never know who it was. Yeah, you know. Uh, so the theory, and anyway, if we did know who it was, there'd be a complete industry that would come to a complete standstill. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the, there's books being written about it every year, and there's a new suspect at least once every year. Mm -hmm. um, I've, you know, I've read at least three books. I mean, I, I, I didn't get obsessed with it. Um, but it, I've obviously I, I, my interest was uh, heightened, um, you know, greatly by making the film. Um, so I'm always interested in in in, uh, in the new theories, um, you know. But um, I just think the mystery will remain, you know, as one of the great unsolved, you know, serial killers of uh, the 20th century. So, uh, well, yeah, the 18th, 18th, is it 19th century? Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, I mean, so I just think it's you know it 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 continues to enthrall people and and horrify people. But it, yeah, it's a it's a wonderful story. Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, the sad thing was obviously Lindsay Siverter was um, she's fabulous and knows her stuff. And uh, I spent a bit of time with her probably eighteen months ago, and she she was telling me on the back of your film, um, the Sir William Gunn grave was actually smashed up. Uh, it's just very oh, yeah. kind of very very sad. Well, there's some, just some lunatics about, aren't there? I mean, it's just bizarre. Um, mm. But yes, I know. Um, yeah, she told me that, and um, you know, a terrible thing to happen, really. But um, but anyway, it's all. But you know, they got a replacement. I heard, and they had a they had another service for them in the in his village up there. Um, so all's well that ends well. You know, he, they, they, he could be laid to rest at last without any stain on his uh, character. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as I said, a lot of, you know, there's some, I've heard Oscar Wilde was the elephant man, uh, <laughs> so, you know, and I mean, you have got the, the, the elite heavyweight contenders, your Jacob Levy's, your Thomas Cutbushes, your George Chapman's, who was Abalan's favourite. And then, of course, Kosminski, Druitt, and I mean, even Ostrog was named in a couple of years after the murders, but he was actually in prison in France. So, you know, I mean, a, I mean, I mean, my personal favourite, I spoke to um, Richard Jones, obviously, really top ripperologist. Um, and he said to me, he said, you know, something, he said, if you ask me, he said, it's probably some poor Polish Jew who we're not even aware of. And we don't even, we've yeah. never even heard of. And, you know, but Charles Cross, uh, obviously that links him. He actually found the, f the first murder. But like you said, um, it's, we could never, you know, it's the Everest of British crime and it'll remain that way yeah. forever. I think so. I mean, even with DNA and all that, I mean, I, did, didn't they find uh, that, that, didn't they try to um, DNA bloodstains off of uh, yeah. Kathy Eddowes? Um, I mean, that, that, and everybody held their breath. But I mean, even if you've got DNA, you still have to match it to someone. Um, so, uh, you know, I just think, as again, I just think someone will probably write a book about that and that will be a bestseller. Um, you know, I've been to, I've, I went to a, a Jack the Ripper convention some years ago where they asked me to in fact it was with lindsay it's the first time i met lindsay um and there were a few people there that came up with some amazing um theories on who who who'd done it uh, one which i was like well he must have done it and um you know um i can't remember his name but he was a poet he wrote he wrote a famous poem called the hound of heaven um and it turns out and in fact um a few years ago i was asked to make a film about this guy uh, who may or may not have been Jack the Ripper. Um, and the theory goes that he he he, he was a, a student, a, a medical student in uh, up up in uh, Scotland, who had come to London to seek his fortune. He'd become an alcoholic, ended up living in poverty in uh, London's East End with with um, uh, prostitutes, um, and he'd um, he was also like trying to make it as a poet at the same time. Um, uh, but he used to disappear. He was, a, you know, an alcoholic, but he had medical training. Um, so that was all like looking good. And then he was uh, basically he was discovered um, a bit a bit like X Factor. But he was discovered by a couple of publishers in London at that time who who read his poem, came and took him and basically uh, moved him into their house. Uh, two Catholic publishers, very famous at the time. Um, and 
the, the story goes that w when he was adopted basically by this family who then basically um made him write poetry a lot of books in fact the hound of heaven is is has been used uh, i think it was nelson mandela quoted it in one of his speeches and so did barack obama so it's quite a well-known poem it's called the hound of heaven um and a lot of his poetry describes um the mutilation of women i mean it's quite, it's almost like a a, a a confession letter i mean it's b b remarkable uh, he was never pulled in by the police or anything. He was never questioned. But the interesting point is, is that in 1988, uh, sorry, 1888, he was moved into this very rich publisher's house uh, with their six children, by the way. Uh, and all of a sudden, the murder stopped. So if he was alive, if this had happened today, he would definitely have been pulled in by the police. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, but there was another one. And I read I read this guy's book and I, I would have definitely, you know, said he was a contender. And yet I've not heard anybody else mention that. So, I mean, there, there's hundreds, you know, but like you like you say, um, is it Kaminsky? He was uh, hot for a yeah. while, and um, there's been a lot. Of, and then when someone comes up with a theory, someone else will come up with a, a, a book a, which disproves that. Do you see what I mean? So yeah. it's like a circular argument. You'll never get, no one's ever going to be able to categorically say, aha, it was him, which I think is brilliant. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, what I've discovered is there's a whole industry. You know, and um, like your Lindsay Siverters and Paul Beggs, Donald Rumbelows, Martin Fido, God rest him. Um, and it's a business which makes a killing, pardon the pun. There's Jack the Clipper Barbers, Jack the Chipper Chip Shops, Jack the Ripper Punk oh, Band yeah. in France, Jack the Ripper Toys. It's bizarre, but do you know what? It's, um, it is, and it, it's, it's something that us as human beings, we are it's it, we're greatly fascinated by things like that yeah, yeah absolutely uh and it's very british it's he's ours jack the ripper is ours you know we've got they've got you know in america they've got their ted bundy's but we've got the original bad boy yeah. so uh, yeah we're very proud of jack the ripper in this country i think yeah do, do you know it's a it's a very english very charismatic flamboyant you know gentleman hat cape Gladstone bag. When in actual fact, you know, um, Gary, that he looked nothing like that. But you know, the Halloween costumes and all that, and it's oh, we yeah. just go along with it. Yeah, of course. You know, the black cap. Uh, sorry, the you know the black cape, and uh, and all. That. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. But like you say, um, I mean, I think what what is one of one of my favourite bits in in the, the film that we made um, was when. Um, Michael Caine drops coins, um, you know, at the scene of one of the murders and he actually drops coins and all the windows open. And it's like, well, how could you have murdered someone who must have been screaming at the top of her lungs? You know, you can't just gut someone with a knife and expect them to lie there quietly. Um, and no one heard anything. And that's where the theory that, you know, that they were killed somewhere else and, 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 uh, and you know then uh uh splayed you know for people to see um you know I, I i just don't know how that can be and then you of course you've got the conspiracy theories of the jews will not be the ones who are to blame um and then it was like you know it wasn't jews it was j-u-e-s which is linked to the masons uh so then you had the whole royalty you know he's being protected and then you had it had to have been two people because someone had to be the getaway driver which is what we had in uh the, the ripper film that we made um so yeah i mean you know as i say we, we could chat about it all night long and um and people do i mean people put you know have made careers out of uh talking about this you know i made one little movie and i've been talking about it for the last 38 years so yeah. Well, Richard Jones says to me, he says, do you know what? Jack the Ripper bought my house. Um, I mean, can I just yeah. ask you, Gary, uh, what did you think when you first sat down and watched the film together? Oh, it was brilliant. I just loved it. I mean, it was so exciting. Uh, I mean, we knew they were going to show the film here and in America at the same time because uh, obviously, you know, it was 100 years 
uh, uh, to the day since uh, the final murder or the first murder. I'm not sure which which one it was. Um, so yeah, we knew it was going to be an event. It was event television, you know, and it, it it was like you know back in the good old days when there was only four channels. So we knew it was going to get a big audience, and you know, but we had no idea it was going to get that many. I think it. I think um, someone estimated that it had been seen by a hundred million people, you know, over that those, those two days, which is astounding. Wow. But then if you think about America, as well, yeah. so it it really was like you know it was like um it was it, it was instantaneous it it didn't it wasn't like quadrophenia which took years before it became you know cult or as soon as it came out people were arguing about it people were talking about it you know it was it was very exciting you know to be part of that film yeah so obviously quadrophenia which i don't want to go into but that's you know that was 1979 you were spider um people probably at that sort obsessed with that film you, you've probably met people and they've just they've been starstruck oh my god it's you but have you ever kind of come across people and they've been like it's billy yeah um not as much as spider obviously because it's a generation thing um it, it's 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 different i get a lot of people shouting out oh spider but the thing about jack the ripper fans and people uh, people are more sort of you know reserved about it really people just say you know they come up very quietly and say so because they show that film a lot um it's it's always on somewhere that the jack the ripper yeah. film um and a lot of people didn't realize i was in it i mean it's one of those uh, um you know so people know you from other things and they see you and stuff and then suddenly you turn up you know in a film with michael kane and susan george and uh and and they're like wow i didn't know you were in that and then they watch it again you know and other people have seen it but didn't realize it was me um mm -hmm. So yeah, no, it, but yeah, it's it's got a. I know it. I knew it had a lot of fans, um, but I get a lot of um, a lot of um, mail from America about it because um, they obviously love anything English, especially um, you know involving serial murders. So um, yeah, no, it's been over the years. It, you know, it's it's been um, a constant joy to be reminded of it, and it's great when it's on. It's, it's probably one of the only things that I'm in that I will watch when it's on because I, I i actually can sort of pretend i'm not in it if you know what i mean and i actually think it's so beautifully shot and there's so many great actors in it like amanda santi and kevin uh michael mcnally uh and susan george uh lizette lizette anthony who you know yeah absolutely um you know but uh, all these people that are in it and michael gothard you know i mean i, I couldn't believe it when i knew i was going to be in the same room as him you know because when i was a kid you know arthur of the britons and things like that he was so you know i loved that show and it was like so and working with amanda santi as well i mean you know these people were like you know when you're a young actor you'd you think that maybe one day you might get to bump into these people you don't expect to be you know having lunch with them and chatting you know so uh no it was a it was an absolute joy you know and, and it's and so as you, i say I, yeah you mentioned on. um michael gothard there so obviously for people who don't know um so he played george lusk um so i've actually been to the george lusk's house and um where seen where he got the letter and all that and so in the film they portrayed him as a as you know because he grabbed you and he was going to hit you with a stick and that but he, they played him they, they portrayed him as a um like a bit of a thug a loud mouth but the real george lusk was mild mannered he was a successful businessman he never swore apparently um very sadly the actor committed suicide a couple of years later yeah yeah i know um yeah very sad um i mean the thing about it you know when you're making films when you're making movies we don't you know you're not given i mean you're not given um a breakdown of the real people that you're playing uh yeah. and obviously i mean you know i remember once um on set um lisa anthony went to the makeup department it was the day we were doing the pub stuff and she came back and she had bruises on her face and she had her teeth blackened out and she'd made herself look she'd obviously done her research 
uh, into what a, you know um, an, an 1888 whore would look like. You know, she'd um, she, you know drinking gin and no dental plan or anything like that, and she came down looking absolutely fucking awful i mean she looked brilliant but she looked absolutely awful <laughs> and and uh david wick said what are you doing <laughs> and she went well that's you know this is my character and she said go and take all that off we're making this film for the americans <laughs> <laughs> so you know it's not real we're making we're trying to entertain people you know um mm. so of course there's a lot of stuff in there that is over the top uh, you know some of the performances i mean even mine it's like you know is well out of order um so so i mean you know what can you say it, you know it's 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 at the end of the day you're using the jack the ripper to, to uh, as a as a thread to make something that is entertaining as well as gripping it's like with the music um and you know it was that i mean you know i mean i think we had the cleanest east end of london uh, you know for the time uh because obviously you you know they wanted clean cobblestone so that it reflected with with the rain so that you could get that beautiful shot you know i mean so no it isn't it isn't based in reality at all uh but again you know i've met uh, you know ripperologists who still say that it's their favorite jack the ripper film uh even though they know it doesn't answer any questions and it actually gives you a completely false narrative of who did it yeah um well you mentioned the music there lindsay civita actually had the music from your film at her wedding um <laughs> you know yeah and even like the film from hell um of course the girls you know the, when they drank gin um it wasn't like the gin people drink today it was like stuff you know that's why all the teeth were missing and and um, yeah, yeah. you know so they certainly didn't look like the the glamorous well, they certainly kinda... didn't, yeah they certainly didn't look like susan george or lizette anthony <laughs> you know what i mean yeah i think you know billy white billy white had the best looking hookers in the in in the, in the east end you know it was what a what a what a stable of gals i had you know yeah. so uh, no it was it was great you know it was um they were fabulous you know all the girls you know playing playing the 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 the, the, the prostitutes they were a little you know a little team you know and it was um they were absolutely brilliant mm. and can i can i ask you gary have you um have you been around the murder sites you might like in real life you might square you henrique street which is called yeah, murder were, street yeah i mean i you know i know the area quite well um you know i wasn't i wasn't there that long ago um uh down in brick lane and we took a little walk around i mean i've got a few mates that do the ripper tours um i haven't been on one but i keep promising next time i'm in london that i will do one um but yeah no i mean i you know i i'm not as i say i'm not a, um i i didn't become obsessed with it i sort of read a couple of books that people gave me uh when i was at conventions um uh, but yeah i mean you know uh i saw from hell which i thought was great i enjoyed that um and i've seen a couple of the old ones i mean you know it's it's as i say we, we just did our take on a very well-known story but it, it seems to have captured the imagination of millions of people and as i say it, it's it's voted number one ripper film of all time on 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 a lot of polls which i'm really pleased about yeah it's um it's uh, as i said i mean i went on to write 22 books make free documentaries and the majority of them are in true crime but i've got to be honest with you gary if i'd never watched that film as an 11 year old um i that completely kind of almost kind of put my path in uh, same as lindsay civet you know she kind of became obsessed with the william gull thing and and lindsay's went on to do been so successful and you know i mean there's some ripperologists um i mean i've done various tours and you know i've sat there and listened to them and i, th I thought in the telling me mary kelly was 23 when she was 25 and you know just mm. You know, a lot of, and because it's so far away, so 136 years on, unless you really switched on, you just kind of believe it. Um, you know, so oh, there yeah. is quite a few cowboys, but 
there is, you know, the, the elite ones, you, you, you make Mick Priestley's, um, the Edward Stowell's. Yeah, Mick Priestley. Yeah, I, re you know, I read Mick Priestley. Yeah, he's great. I read I read Mick's book, which was fabulous. I mean, it was just such a great social history of, of the yeah. time. Uh, and he sent me a copy of his book, um, which, I, which I've still got. And I, it's a, a really good book, Mick's book. Mm. But yeah, he was, yeah, I heard him talk about it. Um, and yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, we know, we know a few of the same people. Um, but yeah, as I say, the last time I did anything, uh, David Wicks and I <laughs> did, um, a, a, and a couple, oh, and, um, uh a few of the other actors we sort of did a, a thing at the cinema museum in london a few years ago um and the place was packed and we basically just talked about the film that we'd made but um i think lindsay was at that and that that was really good fun and people were shouting out you know um you know their theories and and everything else and it you know again it's people are very passionate about that subject you know and it's great to watch you know it really is it's so entertaining well do you know but what like you talk I say, about i don't think we'll ever find out who did it <laughs> no you know you talk about um the americans but i mean i've i've personally met so like i sat down with martin o'neill a couple of years ago i don't know what you do football um and he's obsessed with Jack the Ripper, you know, and I've obviously I know a couple of Ripperologists. They've took Russell Brand on the tour, Simon Cowell, Kelly Osborne, Victor Meldrew, Charlie Sheen. And, and, you know, there's so many people all over the world. Have you kind of come across like some celebrities and they're like, ah, Gary, I want to talk to you about Jack the Ripper? Not really. No, not really. Um no i can't say i have uh, i mean most I, I, I don't know i just don't sort of mix in that celebrity circle um you know i live in a very tiny little village in dorset now um and i've be, been here for over 10 years so i i sort of don't get it I mean, I mean people here in this town they sort of know what what i did you know don't forget when i when i that was probably the last major film that I made was um, Jack the Ripper. Uh, because after that, I thought, it's, and I'd had a really like chock-a-block career up until that point. I'd been acting since I was 12 years old. Uh, and I'd done TV, a lot of TV. I had a sitcom on TV and then Quadrophenia. Then I went to America and did um, shock treatment. Um, and, you know, so, so I, I'd been working consistently and then when I did Jack the Ripper, I, I'd, I'd already decided by that time that I, I didn't want to do this forever. I had uh, other things I wanted to do in my life. Um, and so at the end of that film, I basically said, that's it. And I don't think it's going to get better than this. And, and it, it, it didn't get better than this. And I, and I was like, well, that's it. So I phoned my agent and I said, right, I don't want to go up for any more roles. Uh, and 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 I made the right decision. And I went I went off and for the next 25 years did something completely different. So I didn't really I didn't see the aftermath of what I'd created. So I didn't bump into like quadrophenia fanatics or or, you know, any any, you know, like anything else. And it wasn't until the, the mid 90s um, that quadrophenia came out on DVD and then people started saying hang on a minute weren't you in that you know i'd been i'd already been working in a completely different industry uh and people were like mate they were like you never told us and i was like well why would i do that so i'd been working with people for years i had no idea that i was spider in quadrophenia or billy white in jack the ripper because i just never brought it up in conversation and because they didn't know i was an actor no one would even even you know consider it um so i, I sort of managed to bypass that and it's only been in the last 10 years really that people have shown an interest in stuff that i did nearly 40 years ago so it's really interesting to to know and it's also really nice to know that the work that i did is remembered after all yeah. this time you know because if if i'd stayed in the business i'd have probably ended up in eastenders or emmerdale or something mm. uh and then that would have all gone you know been forgotten yeah um so obviously i was just going to ask you what does gary shield do now but when you're talking about the other things that you did i've googled you i've been watching a bit of your stuff this week you're very much into your music aren't you 
Yeah, yeah, that, I've always been, that's, that was always what I wanted to do, um, you know, right the way back from when I was, a, you know, a baby. Um, it was always, I was, my intention was to make a, my life music uh, and make a living out of music, and I did that. Uh, and, you know, I've slowed down a lot, I'm, you know, I'm getting on now, um, and I wanted to retire to Dorset, so that's what I've done. Um, and... Uh, no, it's, I, I live a very quiet life. Um, you know, I've got my own recording studio, so I still write music for people and that. But for 25 years, I just wrote music for television and and commercials and radio. And I loved it. It was, uh, you know, the perfect job for me because I wasn't in the limelight. I didn't have to, you know, worry about being recognized. And yet I still got that artistic achievement uh that I always wanted. So, um, no, it was perfect for me. You know, since then, in the last few years, I've been asked to do a couple of little movies. And if it interests me and, you know, or I know the black people, then, then, then I'll consider it. But it's, but I'm certainly not interested in, in you know, the, the business is not the same today as it was when I was in it, if you know what I mean. It's a completely different business. Um, and if it was, put it this way, if the business was what it is like today, if it was like that then, I would never have done it. Um, you know, I would have kept away. But uh, as I say, back then it was a much smaller world and much more exclusive. And, um, you know, I'm really, really happy that the work that I did back in the 70s and the 80s has survived this long. Mm hmm well, I was just going to say to you, what what do you do now? What's 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 um, your plan for the future, Gary? Uh, stay out of trouble. Um, try and stay out of trouble. Um, you know, I mean, I keep an eye on what's going on in the world at the moment, and it doesn't exactly fill me full of joy. Um, so, really, I mean, as I say, I'll continue writing music. Uh, which I do, um, whether people like it or not is not my problem. Um, so no, I'm, I'm, and as I say, I've got, I've got married recently for the second time. So I've been married okay. nearly a year. Thank yeah. you. Um, and I'm off to Marrakesh in May because I've never been to North Africa. So I'm going to go to Africa for a while, um, do a bit more traveling, uh, basically take it easy if I can. Mm um and uh, well i was gonna say we will will, will we ever see any films you'll never say never but you're quite skeptical about what what yeah i mean i made a film four years ago um um called to be someone uh and i only did that because all my old mates from quadrophenia were going to be in it and we all decided to do it and it was with leslie ash and toya um and uh trevor laird and a lot of the original cast and we hadn't worked together for obviously for 40 years so we all phoned each other and said oh come on let's do it um and it was a really good fun thing to do we really enjoyed it it was a lot of young new members of you know new, new young actors that were on it and it was fun to watch them how they work and how different they are today than we were i mean you know back in my day when we were doing jack the ripper they had a fully stocked bar on set you know we were like drinking brandy at 5 30 in the morning you know now if you turn up for work and you've got if you you know you'd be fired immediately um mm. so it was it's interesting but uh you know i haven't even seen it i never even watched the film um when it came out um uh but it was just good fun to do and i sort of did it because you know we had we spent some time together uh but it didn't make me think oh I'll get a new, you know, I'll, I'll phone my old agent up and say, come on, let's get me, you know, I want to go out and do more movies. No, but like you say, if someone, you know, you never know, someone might say, you know, oh, we thought you were dead. You know, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's make a movie. So, um, you know, I'll wait and see. So I won't say never, um, but I'm certainly not, you know, in the business of, uh, of, um, you know, trying to restart my old career. It's a bit late in the day, I think, for that. Mm. And um, just before I let you go, I mean, but what what, what is your vices in life? Then, what, what's your your passion? Are you is it a football? Is it what 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 makes you tick these days? No, um, I think 
I, I, I mean, I was never into politics, and that, that was something I just wasn't into. But the older I get, you know what they say, when you're young, you're a liberal, you know, you're left wing. And by the time you reach 70, you are so far on the right that you can't even turn left, you know. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm very interested in politics and I'm very interested to see what happens next in America. So I keep an eye on that. Uh, but as I say, at the moment, I'm, I, you know, I, I I'm interested in so many different things. I mean, I even I run the local quiz night in my local pub, you know, and that takes a month for me to work that out. And uh, and I enjoy that. I enjoy village life. I like village politics. Uh, I enjoy where I am. Um, it's great being married again. I've got two lovely dogs who keep me fit uh, and touch wood. Uh, I'm uh, healthy and um, and uh, expect to still be here by the time I'm 70. So and hopefully still be talking about, you know, some great work that I did. Then it'll be 50 years ago, you know. So. So, yeah, no, it's good to talk to people that, you know, are inspired and also really like the work that I did. So, you know, it's great. Thank you for that. No, but I've got to say, I mean, whatever you've done in the past or whatever you do, you in my head, you will always be Billy. And, um, yeah. you know, that, that yeah. is tr tremendous. It really is. It's always, it's been a, a, a huge part of my, I actually was watching it the other night and, and I started Googling actors and I know some of them aren't here anymore. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, but it's just, as I said, I watch it as an 11 year old kid and I'm 44 in a couple of weeks and, um, you know, I'll watch it again. I might even watch it tonight after talking to you. But you know what, mate? It's been absolute pleasure and honour. Oh, Thank you so pleasure. much for giving me your time. Was there anything you wanted to talk about, um, Gary? I was going to call you Billy there. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> was there anything you wanted to talk about, Billy? Any, want to put any links on for me to promote? Because I'm going to share this video all over. No, not really. I've got a YouTube channel if people want to check out some music that What's I'm it doing. Called? It just says Gary. Just go on to YouTube, put my name in it, Gary Shale. It'll what I'll do there. is I'm gonna I'm gonna put the link in the bio to this video. So if anyone wants to follow Billy's channel, click over and uh, give him a follow. Yeah, they might be surprised. I, I, most people are when when they hear the music that I write, and because I, I, I mean, again, back in nineteen when was it nineteen eighty three, I did a TV show called Johnny Jarvis. For the bbc and i wrote the music for that um and you know at the time that was quite something for an actor to write the music for the show that he's in uh and i got nominated for an ivan novello award for that and uh and that was a big surprise to people but because of the time i think it it was it was on a, a weird time slot on bbc2 so it didn't get a lot of um a lot of uh, viewers as much as i think it should but recently it came out on dvd and the amount of people that i'm now getting writing to me saying my god i didn't know you'd written the music for this and so again it's another thing that that i did years ago that is now suddenly resurfaced and people are like you know re-evaluating re it and re-appreciating it and uh so yeah now i'm very proud of the work that i did back then uh and like i say obviously it it, it must have struck a nerve because here we are talking about it 38 years later mm -hmm. And uh, I did listen to some of your music the other day. Uh, did you? Am I right in saying you written like some kind of Christmas song? Because when I was watching it, it was very like ska mod. You know, you, you oh, had yeah, like no, no, I yeah, I know the one you mean. No, I didn't write that. That was written by right. a friend of mine called Pat, Pat Davy, and they asked me to do that. Um, obviously, because it's mod. It was very yeah. mod um, orientated, and uh, I, that, I think that was about five years ago. I did that, and that was just like something I did as a favour. Um, yeah. But that went viral. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, no, I didn't write that. I'm glad. Well, it's not really the kind of thing I would have written. Uh, no, I'm a little bit more serious than that. Uh, but yeah, no, that. I mean, there's a lot of shit on my YouTube channel. I mean, you can see, you know, me in America back in my drinking days um you know me on stage with pat quinn you know completely arsehole in front of all these americans who wouldn't know irony if you jumped up and bit them with it um it was just brilliant i had so much fun in america um 
because they really don't get me at all. They don't, you know, you could tell Americans fans, you know, that they're arseholes and they'll love you for it. Uh, you know, so um, there's a lot of that on there that, you know, so, you know, there's a lot of, um, what's the word, um, parental guidance uh, should be given for watching some of the stuff on my, on my actual YouTube. Uh, if you just Google my name and go to go to youtube there's a lot of very strange stuff a, a, a lot of stuff that i don't even remember doing uh which is great i don't care you know that was then um but as i say my youtube channel that is like the music that i'm i'm quite happy about people listening to well what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to check out myself so the thumbnail to this video is gary's part as billy in um white chapel i think he's got a bottle in his hand and he's just about to attack a copper um if, oh, as yeah. i said if you want to go and have a look at his his youtube channel click on the bio in this click on the link um and i'm going to put this video out on thursday and i'll put it on all the jack the ripper pages i'll send lindsay civiter it and mick Priestley and do you know what? It's just been an absolute pleasure, sir. Thank you so much yeah, for your time. Yeah, really nice chatting to you. And listen, hi, Mick. Hi, Lindsay. Lovely to speak to you both and hope to see you all soon. And it's been a real pleasure talking to you. God bless, sir. Thank you so much. Cheers, mate. Bye. Take care. Bye.